Well, the aquaponics system, um, which was mentioned in an earlier post, is now operational. At the moment, I've only got the two grow beds in operation, but there is a plan to put a further two grow beds here, or perhaps using a single large bed on over this side. Each of these beds is 500 litres in size, and they're about 450 mil deep. You can see on the side of the bed here, you can see the, the gravel line just here, and the base of the bed there. So it's about 450-500 mil um, of gravel, which is deeper than is normal for aquaponics. Normally they're only about 300 mil deep, um, but it is a trial to see how this goes. The plan is to put 300 mil beds on this side just to see how the two compare. But as you can see, what's happening here is the bed is currently flooding. You can see the water coming in the back, and that's coming in on a timer, and then the water rises. And down inside here we have a standpipe just here. So the water rises up because it reaches the level of that standpipe, then it flows down the top of the standpipe, leveling the water off. And then when the water turns off, I'm not sure if you can see it in there, it's a little hard to make out, but there is actually a, um, a few holes in the standpipe which let the water drain back in. So what it'll do is it'll fill rather quickly, it takes about 10 minutes to fill, and then it'll drain very slowly. And you can actually see the water level just here as the bed is actually filling. Now the bed is the beds the grow beds are filling out of our sump tank, which is over here in the corner. So they fill out of that. So this, the pump that's running that fill cycle is sitting inside that tank, and they also drain back into that pipe. You can see this whole series of pipes here. It looks a little bit complex, but what I'll do is I'll actually on the website I'll build a um, or draw a little schematic, simple schematic explaining what all these pipes are doing. So that's our sump sump tank. And then into the sump tank, the, the grow beds drain back into the sump tank, but also there's another pump in there which pumps up along and up this little uh, tube here up into our uh, raft tank. So if I just jump up here, you'll be able to see the raft tank. So we've got some lettuce on this side, cabbage, sugarloaf cabbage on that side. So far, um, they're not growing very strongly, but um, they're doing okay. You can see this, this little lettuce here, he's doing quite fine. It's interesting that the green ones seem to be doing better than the red ones in the, in the uh, lettuce. Cabbage is doing less, less well. But you can see what it is, it's actually a two inch thick piece of styrofoam that has had, had holes cut in the bottom and the net pots pushed through. The water flows into the top here. It's a little bit turbid and I'll explain that um, in a minute. But um, the water flows through, it's got a couple of aerators inside there, and when it's down like that, the plant's roots sit in the water. There's another standpipe just under here, and that keeps the water level at this level all the time. And then the water then splashes into our fish tank. Now, there's no fish in here at the moment, there are actually a couple of goldfish in that pond, but in there are some. There's no fish in our fish tank yet. This is the water from the uh, raft tank at the top. And then we also have some um, aeration in here. You can see the air tubes, and as they go down, you can see the beautiful lots and lots of bubbles, which is really, really good to aerate the tank. And we also have a thermometer here doing a few recordings. Now, so what happens then is the water um, flows into into here. The water then flows down to the bottom, and you won't be able to see it, but over in the corner over here, there is the other side of this this bit here, and that's got an elbow on it with a pipe that runs all the way down to the bottom of the, of the water so that it's the bottom of the water that actually flows out not the top so we should get a nice flow of water inside here with lots of oxygen because we're planning on, I'm planning on putting trout inside this tank and trout like lots and lots of oxygen so that should really be um, really quite good for them over on this side here you can see this funny sort of apparatus here this is actually the drain that drains back to the sump, so the water cycles um, through the sump, both the grow bed water and the fish water. And obviously it's all the same thing, so as it goes to the grow bed it cleans that water as well. The reason I've got this T-piece here with this exposed top is uh, when I, I didn't originally have that on, I just had a straight elbow there. And what happened is because I had that um, pipe down under the water here, it actually created a siphon and started to drain this bed. It, the siphon went faster than this pump is currently working. so. Uh, that was a bit of a problem. By having this exposed at the top, it means that it can always suck air in through the top here and uh, will prevent that happening again. It also means that whilst that's exposed like that, it's um, I've got some really nice um, uh, aeration in there as the air mixes with the water. So hopefully that'll uh, help aerate the water just a little bit further. Now all of the um, pumps, I've got two pumps 
running at the moment. One pump runs 24-7 and that's the one that's fit in this cycle. The other pump turns on for 15 minutes every hour um, and that's to run the grow beds. And all of that electrical gear is run from, if I come around this other side, still a bit of a mess, bit of a building site, so please excuse the mess, from this tub down under here. So this tub has had um, some holes drilled in it at, at the top to, um, I'll bring it out, to uh, allow air in and out but really quite under the lips so that uh, it'll stay fairly watertight and underneath the beds it should also be fairly protected from rain and as you can see there's a bewildering number of stuff inside here but um, what we basically have is we have our air pump here which is a um, um, quite a big air pump pumping out about 2,000 litres of air, uh, air into the into the pond per, uh, per hour um, we have our two permanent uh, electrical connections, that's the air pump and the 24-hour um, uh, pump, and then we have the pump which is running on a timer for 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, and we also have our, all our air pipes and all that sort of stuff. I also have in here a energy meter. Now that's been running for just on 24 hours, or just short of 24 hours I should say, and that's used 3.5 kilowatt hours of power so far. So we're actually going to monitor the power usage of this system and then we're going to make a few modifications, changing pumps and changing systems a little bit to see if we can reduce that power usage. So I'll just pop that lid on the top there and I'll put that away in a second. So as you can see it's, it's quite a nice little system. Um, I'm hoping that it'll work really well. The plan is to give it, let it run for another week or two uh, without any um, fish in it. Hopefully all of this um, solution, all of this um, particulate matter that's in this water it's making it so cloudy but you can see it's um, really quite cloudy. That should all come out and be filtered out into the grow beds. It's actually what's come from. These grow beds have um, um, this gravel comes with quite a lot of dust on it and it, in order to save water I didn't wash the gravel first and that was by choice so I expected this to get quite turbid it should actually drop out into the grow bed. So in a week week and a half I'm hoping um, this water should be clear again and all of that should be sitting in the bottom of the beds ready to do some, some good work. So the next step is we're going to just let these, this system run. Well, I'm going to take um, photographs every day of this bed and um, I'll post them on to the, the um, website uh, periodically, hopefully at least twice a week so we can um, monitor how this bed is going. So at the moment I'm adding uh, a capful of sea salt to the system every day and I'm just starting today I'm putting a teaspoon of urea into the system to increase the nitrogen level in the system um, which will help the um, nitrogen fixing bacteria do their work for me so to help their populations grow up. Hopefully then in a week or two, week to two weeks and I'll note that on the, on the thing we'll introduce 80 trout fingerlings into here now they'll be about three to four inches long and they should uh, be quite happy in this tub and then I won't be adding the urea any longer and probably not even the sea salt because the waste that they produce will then start to feed my plants but at the moment there's no fish in the system apart from two, um, two small goldfish uh, well probably about four or five inch goldfish um, so, um, so I'm, I'm using other things just to help boost the system a little bit and give it a bit of a leg up so let's um, monitor the, the progress and we'll see how the growth is over say the next uh, month and um, and then we might go on to a weekly cycle for the month, a few, few months after that, for the next 12 months, and we'll see how this system matures and what sort of growth we get out of it. Both the gravel beds and our deep water culture um, flotation raft system at the top.